Richard A. Darian, thank you for coming to the show. Good morning, Karen. All right, now I want to ask you, uh, the, the tribunal comes out with a decision, Filipino fishermen uh, test just the power of the ruling, and here's Chinese fishermen shooing them away, how it's been for the last three or four years. Well, the other day was, without a question, a clean sweep for the Philippines. No? In legal de jure terms, we secured the slam dunk against China. But now it's the day after the party. Now the real politic begins. How do we translate that slam dunk in de jure legal terms into actual gains on the ground? The problem is that we have the moral high ground, we have the legal high ground, but on the ground, on the disputed waters themselves, China has the high ground. Very so, good point, yeah. that's a good point, go ahead. So clearly we see that China is trying to leverage its dominance on the ground by communicating to the Philippines that do not flaunt and taunt the verdict yeah. against us because we can hurt oh, you on the ground. Okay. We have the requisite capabilities to completely cut off Philippine access to the Scarborough Shoal to make it almost impossible for your fishermen to gain access to the resources there. China even has an uh, capability to completely cut off our supply lines and reconnaissance and surveillance activities in Kalayan or Spratly chain of islands where we have a lot of people in Pagasa for instance or the mm. Tito Island. So China has has that upper ground when it comes to operational military terms while we have the legal uh, upper ground. So a lot of real politic high stakes negotiations are going to mm -hmm. happen. Let me say how glad I am that pr President Duterte has stopped former President Ramos to deal mm -hmm. with this because remember... Why would he be the perfect guy for this? I think he's the perfect guy because first of all he's very close to President uh, Duterte. President Duterte uh, completely trust him and has a lot of respect for him. During the inauguration speech, he gave a special thanks uh, to Ramos. But Ramos himself was in the middle of this dangerous geopolitical chessboard mm -hmm. in the mid-1990s when China wrested control of the Philippine claim Mischief Reef, mm -hmm. which is within more or less our exclusive economic zone in 1994. By 1995, we had a full-fledged crisis. And remember, this is three years after the United States left uh, out yes. of the Philippines. So yes. we didn't have the American backing, but he used a very astute combination of bilateral and multilateral stri strategy uh -oh. simultaneously okay. to reign in China and find a peaceful compromise. All right, let's, uh, let's go back to a bit of history. Talk about that. When uh, President uh, Fidel V. Ramos was president right. and China first encroached yes. on Mischief Reef, right? Yeah. Okay, what did he do then that you feel would be helpful today? Right. I think for President Ramos, he did three things simultaneously. Before? Yes. He tried to reinvite back the Americans through the Visiting Forces Agreement because he realized that the Chinese sense a power vacuum and like the shark ones, they, uh, they, they sense the blood, they come in. So opportunistically, China was taking advantage of the power vacuum that was left by the exit of Americans. So he tried to bring them back uh, through the Visiting Forces Agreement. The second thing he did was to push for AFP Modernization Act. He realized that the Philippines has to develop its own capability if it wants to have anything that has a semblance of independent foreign policy, mm. although of course you can still have the alliance from U.S. as a backup mm. option, but he also went for multilateral approach. So under he the ages oh. of ASEAN, uh, we pushed under the Ramos administration for some sort of regional consensus that found its denouement mm. in the 2002 Declaration and Conduct of, of oh. Parties in the South China Sea, which kind of at least cooled yes. down tensions during that time. But the but you said uh, FBR was able to rein China in. Do you mean in a way that uh, reclamation activities, yes. building activities right. were not as quick yes, as mean, they were in the last right. six years? And, and the thing is, of course, the fourth thing that he did was direct engagement with the leadership of China. Because he realized you cannot solve this problem by just assembling a coalition. You still have to deal with China at the end of the day. And that's why you saw him, Jiang Zemin, President Ramos, high-level officials from the Philippines and China constantly met and tried to manage a dispute. So I think that was a very deft, that was a very astute strategy okay. to deal with the issue. Yes, we lost the mischief reef, but the situation could have got way worse. Mm. China could have built advanced facilities like mm. Vietnam and other countries in the area, but it didn't. Mm. So we toned down the tensions. And mm. the important thing also is that he preserved the overall constructive relationship mm. that we had with China okay. that was developing. So economic relations did not also suffer. But is it fair to say that we lost mischief during FBR's time? Would I, that be a fact? 
Yes, I mean, I think that's the reality, and I think we were caught off guard, and that uh, really exposes our lack of m m domain awareness. You see, our yes. problem is not only minimum deterrence, to deter other enemies from coming to our waters or punish them if they do. Our problem is that we don't even know what's happening within our waters. Yes. So I think President Ramos immediately realized we have to ramp up our own capabilities and surveillance capabilities. So he was paying the price for the inefficacies or inefficiencies of his predecessors, mm. but the moment he realized that there was a gap, there was a strategic gap, he tried to fill that in. So we see that he didn't just talk about bilateral or only multilateral, only U.S. He did everything simultaneously. And that's why if you go across the region, President Ramos is one of the most respected leaders in Asia. Okay. Uh, you know, yeah. Some would say he's the Lee Kuan Yew of the Philippines. He would say Lee Kuan Yew is the Ramos of Singapore. But, but, you know, but, but the point is, you know, yeah. he's one of the most respected leaders and the Chinese also have very high regard for him. Okay. And, and of course, at the same time, we, I, we know that President Ramos and President Duterte, what they have in mind is not a change in the strategic objective of the Philippines. Our strategic objective remains the same. We will secure our claims. We will defend our sovereign rights within our exclusive economic zone. What we're talking about here is a temporary experimental tactical shift. I see. So in the short run, yet, let's change the tactics because it's clear that in the last six years, China has been more aggressive than, be than before. So you also need a different strategy than what he adopted before. Yeah. But the Aquino strategy of uh, counterbalancing and yes. confrontation did not also create the necessary change in China's behavior. Mm. Yes, or it did not. Uh, it did not create the conducive environment uh, yeah, okay. for management of this dispute. I mean, of course, the victory in, at the Hague is a vindication of the legal warfare strategy of the Aquino yes. administration. But looking at the bigger picture, China's reclamation actually expanded in the last three years. 1,000 hectares of land have been reclaimed in the area. And China now has essentially the skeleton of an air defense identification zone, not to mention our bilateral, uh, diplomatic, and economic ties have also suffered yeah. in the last few years. So I think President Duterte is saying maybe it's time for some tactical change. Change, and that's at least good. temporary. That's I good. think it's necessary. I think it's time to do. I mean, as Einstein put it, you keep on doing the same thing and expecting different results is a definition of insanity. <laughs> so I think, uh, I think uh, Duterte got the cue from Einstein and saying maybe we have to do something different for a while, okay. right? But of course, the red line is very clear. Any bilateral engagement with China should not compromise our sovereignty claims and rights. All right.